Hey everybody, welcome back to Going Solo. So far the idea was laid down and the demo is completed. Right now we have a complete working song that can be taken in as a cohesive unit. It's complete, but it's not produced, and definitely not ready to release for lots of people to hear. It sounds quite crude in demo form, to be honest. But that begins to change today. At this point in the project, the focus shifts from getting thoughts and ideas down to laying down final performances of the parts. We are actually recording the song now. Now, as I said previously, an important part of a demo for me is having something to jam along to when recording all the final parts. I don't have a band of people that can sit down and record a basic skeleton of a song for tweaking and layering onto later. This demo serves that purpose for me. Following the same order that I used for recording the demo parts, I'll now re-record everything with final performances. So in the case of this episode, we start with the guitars. I'll mute the original guitar parts and play the new final guitar parts along with the demo. Recording the final parts in the context of a whole song like that helps inspire good playing and singing that fits the song. But why redo it in the first place? Why not just release what's already done? Well, very simple. It was thrown together. The demo was not meant to sound amazing, and the playing was very basic. After the demo is done, I go back over it and decide how the parts should really sound, and sometimes come up with better version of the parts. Sometimes I come up with better ideas in the context of a song also, versus just listening to one isolated instrument playing. Also, no considerations were made regarding the mix, which is how everything sounds together in the final product. It was just strictly getting ideas down. Now much consideration will be given for the mix when all these final parts are recorded. Things like how dense or sparse with sound it is, you know, how many layers of instruments, how many different instruments in other words. What will be positioned where? On top of putting things left and right in stereo, you also have ways of making things sound up close and intimate or very distant and far away. So in the case of this guitar episode, I'm concerned with the guitar's tone. Uh, which equipment to use, uh, which guitars, which amps, pedals, effects, etc. Which of those are going to serve the song properly for a feel that fits in, and how it will be recorded. I have two main options for recording the electric guitars. Method number one, a guitar amp, microphone stand and microphone, or microphones. Uh, stick them right up against the amp and crank the amp up and hook the microphone or microphones into the audio interface and into the laptop. This records the real natural sound of the amp and the room that it's in, but the problem is this room doesn't always sound that great, so sometimes I will do this, but other times, like today, I'll use method number two. I'm gonna hook my guitar directly into my pedal board. That is one physical piece of gear I will use because I want to turn on the red Marvel Drive pedal. That is a pedal that emulates an old Marshall amplifier and has a great sound. That's why I'm using the pedal board. But other than that, I'm gonna go into the audio interface and then into the computer for the amp simulator. And it's great because I have the flexibility of changing any of those knobs or even choosing a different amp simulator even after I've recorded the guitar parts. Now sticking a microphone in front of a real guitar amp always sounds good, but you do have to get the sound you want the first time or else you might be re-recording it later. One of the advantages of amp simulators on the computer is that the original bare guitar signal is all that's recorded, and you can change any effect later as many times as you want to. You can change amps, speaker cabinets, new effects, you can tweak the knobs on all the effects anytime you want. I already made the decision a while back that I will do the rhythm guitars into the computer directly using effects and logic. This will allow a lot of flexibility later on in the process. Now I'm going to record the first rhythm part. At this point, also considering what's going on in the mix later, I'm going to double that part, recording a second layer that duplicates the first one. Doubling can come in handy for making a part sound thicker and making it stand out more. In the case of my guitars, one of the fundamental staples of my sound has always been recording two identical parts and then panning one all the way left, the other one all the way right for a rich stereo sound. The mixing episode will really highlight that concept.
Okay, now that we've doubled that, now we're going to add another secondary rhythm part that starts building up to the chorus. Well, that pretty much does it for electric. Now the acoustic rhythm parts. Pretty simple setup with a couple of microphones. I got one aimed down. It's picking up the overall sound of the guitar and some of the room. The other one's aimed at the sound hole getting all the picking. They're both headed into the audio interface and into Logic on a couple of tracks. I can just have them complement each other or I can make them stereo later. This is going to be a big improvement over the demo because for the demo I used the electric pickup in the blue acoustic guitar. I plugged it in and that pickup sounds absolutely terrible. This is going to sound much more natural. Once again, all of these parts will be doubled for later, so here's another one. Those are the completed rhythm guitar parts. Now what wasn't shown in this video is that I actually recorded each part shown two to three times. Having multiple takes of something can come in very handy later and that will be shown off in the mix episode as well. And here's the progress on the song as it makes the first step from demo to final product. The final rhythm guitars have been recorded. You may have noticed during this video that these guitar parts sound pretty unflattering. While they're unmixed, they're all just fighting for the same space right now. Once they're seasoned lightly with just the right effects and given a spot to sit in the mix, they will hopefully go from sounding good to sounding great. But that'll happen a little later. So that's it for this time. Next episode, we're going to lay down the bass. And as always, if you're enjoying this, be sure to hit like and subscribe. We'll see you next time on Going Solo. Well.